welcome to today's lecture so we're still on thermodynamics and this is still lecture one and um, today we're looking at the energy in thermal processes so we've been looking at different thermal processes uh, for now let's start let, let's now look at um, energy uh, on uh, thermal processes so my name is Ham Teddy let's begin so to start with let me tell you what we're going to cover in this slide so we're going to cover heat and internal energy we'll cover specific heat calorimetry uh, i mean we'll, we'll cover specific heat and calorimetry and then we will also look at the latent heat of capacity yeah so we can we'll look at latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization and we we'll also look at the first changes and then we we'll summarize by looking at the energy transfers okay so heat and energy uh, sorry heat and internal energy so let's begin uh, by distinguishing or finding the distinction between heat and the internal energy so um, heat and the internal energy ca it should not be used interchangeably because heat is different it's totally different from the internal energy remember we defined heat as the transfer of energy from one uh, from the system to the environment or from the environment to the system or from one substance to the other that's what we defined internal energy uh, sorry that's what if we defined heat is or the degree of uh, hotness that's what we defined heat okay so now the internal energy is simply just this I, I think internal energy is simply just uh, the energy that is uh, found uh, in a substance this these types of energy these types of energies are okay we have kinetic we have potential energy we have chemical energy we have a lot of kinds I mean types of energies so let's take a look at some notes so a major distinction must be made between heat and um, internal energy uh, these terms are not interchangeable you can't use them interchangeably so heat is the transfer of energy between a system and its environment uh, due to the temperature difference between them so remember I defined an environment so an environment is simply just any area that is any area that is just outside the system and then a system is simply just a region that has been chosen for study or for experiments okay so the symbol q is uh, used to present uh, the amount of energy transferred by heat between the system and this environment so q is um, so q is what we're going to be using to symbolize uh, heat in this topic okay to symbolize heat energy in this topic so internal energy is the energy associated with atoms and molecules of a system so this is what I was just trying to explain internal energy is just the energy that is associated with the atoms and molecules of a system of any given system meaning uh, atoms can be in motion meaning they have the kinetic energy if they are not moving it means that they have a potential energy yeah so this is what I was just talking about and they've also given examples the same examples I talked about this is kinetic and potential energy okay so the, the, the atoms are associated with the random translation or rotation or vibration or motion yeah of particles that make up the system okay all right so let's look at the specific heat so specific heat so i'm just running through the slide because we discussed most of the things uh during the lecture okay specific heat is simply just uh, the heat that is required to change the temperature of a unit mass of a substance uh, by a degree so uh, specific heat is uh, symbol symbolized by C, small letter C. Specific specific heat is simply just equal to um, 
so specific heat is just according to the definition it's the heat that is required to change a unit mass uh, of any given substance by um, a degree the heat required to change the temperature of a unit mass of any given substance by a degree that's the specific heat that's the simplest definition for specific heat okay so that is how I simplify the definition so the heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a given substance by a degree that's specific heat and it's given by the formula C is equal to Q over M delta T where C is the specific heat capacity and then Q is simply the heat energy and then M is simply the mass uh, of that substance and then the change in T is simply just the, uh, the temperature difference between um, I mean from the initial and the final temperature yeah so this can also be rearranged to make Q the subject, meaning in case you've been asked to find uh, the heat that is required or th that is required um, or that is transferred or lost by a substance during a chemical reaction or during any reaction, uh, you simply just have to say Q is equal to, when you cross multiply there, you get your Q to be equal to, let me just write it properly, Q is equal to, so when you do the cross multiplication there, putting one there as a denominator, you find that you just have MC delta T as your Q. Alright, so let's quickly move on. So this is just a table showing the specific heats at 1 atm uh, at constant pressure and uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So this is uh, this is, uh, I mean, these are specific heat capacities that have been given on this table. So if you've, if you've been taught to calculate the specific heat, uh, I mean, to calculate the heat required to transfer maybe energy, if there's something that has to do with aluminium, you come and pick this one. If the jaws that, I mean, if the formulas that are, uh, if, if the units that you are using consist of jaws, kg, and degree Celsius. Okay, so you pick this one, and then if you are using calories, you can pick this one. Okay. So let's take a look at this example. How much heat input is needed to raise a temperature of an uh, empty 20 kg vert made of iron from 10 to 90 degrees? So the first thing that you need to do is to write a formula. Okay. So the first thing that you need to do is to write the formula. So, okay, all right. So, the formula is simply just um, the formula is simply just Q is equal to the question is how much heat. So I find in Q, Q is equal to M C delta T. So uh, let us find delta T. We've been given uh, the initial and the final temperature. So delta T is simply just the final temperature minus the initial temperature so the final temperature is simply just uh, 90 degrees Celsius minus uh, 10 degrees Celsius so when you subtract the two the answer that you get is simply just 80 degrees Celsius as your answer so this one can either be in Kelvin or uh, degrees Celsius but depending with uh, the units of C there you can use either in Kelvin or degrees Celsius Okay, so Q is simply just equal to uh, M, and then, I mean, M has been given to be 20, so we can write our 20 kg there, and then C for, uh, they're saying this vert is made of iron. So we can go back to the table, we check iron, iron or steel is simply just 450 joules kg degrees Celsius. So, um, this is just 420, uh, it's in kg, is it in kg? Okay, it's in joules uh, per kg uh, degree Celsius. Okay, suppose the, the degree is supposed to be behind there. Alright, so 
when you do that you also say you also multiply this by the temperature difference which is 80 degrees celsius and then q will now give us when you multiply everything there you get something like you get something like 7.2 times 10 to the power um to the power 5 joules which can also be written as uh, 720 kilo joules so this is the energy uh, the heat uh, energy that is needed okay so the second question says what if the vat is filled with 20 kg of water so if you have filled this cup i mean if you have filled this um, a vet with water meaning we also have to include the specific heat for water so let us find q for water and then we'll add the two so we say q is equal to mc delta t so the mass of water will still be 20 kg and then mc delta so this is for ion let us now find for water okay and then the specific heat for water is something like 4180. Let's check on the table. Um, yeah, let's check on the table. Uh, for water, water, which is in liquid form, it's 4186. 4186. So let's go and write 4186 and then we multiply it with the temperature difference so 4186 joules per kg uh, degrees celsius so, and then the temperature difference which is delta t we found was 80 so when you multiply everything you get something like 6.7 times 10 to the power 6 uh joules then when you uh when you when you multiply everything or when you want to convert that to kilojoules you find your q being equal to 6700 kilojoules okay so this is what you simply just get and then they are saying what if the vat is filled with water so meaning this is just for water what i found is just for water this was for iron which is the vat this was for iron which is the vat and then the answer there for our b you just have to add the two to get the final answer so when you add 720 plus um 6700 uh the answer that you get so this is in kilojoules this will give us something like um, we can physics for used to use uh, were, were allowed to use calculators so 720 plus 6700 6, that is about seven seven thousand four hundred and twenty so this is about seven thousand four hundred and twenty uh, kilojoules so this is how you do the calculations Let's quickly move on to the next question. Okay. So let's look at calorimetry. So calorimetry is just a process that is used uh, to measure the heat uh, capacity of any given substance. So the process or the procedure or I don't know how you can call it but as long as it's a process that has been that can be used to measure the heat capacity of any material that process is called calorimetry okay so there are also uh, calculations that involve calorimetry so in discussing heat in thermodynamics we often consider a particular system so a system which is just any object or set of objects we choose to consider so out of uh, out of the environment if you choose a jar just to consider a jar as your system it means that you are going to make some assumptions that um, if for instance you choose a jar and then you 
uh, you tell me to say it's a closed system by the way there are two types of systems there is a closed system and then there is also an open system there is a closed system and an open system so for a closed system there there is no mass transfer there is no mass transfer but uh, heat energy I mean but yeah but the energy can be transferred from the system to the environment for the open system there is uh, the ma there is mass transfer and energy can be transferred from the environment to the system okay so let us look at this okay this is what I'm just talking about everything else in the universe is the environment when you choose a particular uh, portion of that environment as a system okay so there are several categories of systems open and closed system so a closed system is one for which no mass enters or leaves but energy may be exchanged with the environment and then an open system and then in an open system mass may enter or leave as may energy okay many idealized systems we study in physics are closed so most of the things that we're going to be dealing with most of the questions that we'll be dealing with consider them to be closed systems so meaning uh, no mass enters or leaves uh, the system and then energy is exchanged with the environment and the system okay okay so a closed system is said to be isolated if no energy in any form as well as no mass passes across the boundaries otherwise it is not okay so an isolated system an isolated system is that uh, in which no energy uh, no energy of any form or no mass is allowed to enter or leave the system or is allowed to cross the boundaries in short so that one is called an isolated system so if you have a system if this is if you have a system okay if the whole uh, screen is the environment and then we just choose this part as our system this is the part that we're just using for studying so if we make assumptions that um, no mass or no energy can cross the boundaries it means that uh, this is going to be considered to be an isolated system okay let's look at this question if of t at 95 I think I was supposed to be something here I've just forgotten to put it again okay if dash of t at 95 degrees Celsius is poured into a 150 uh, grams glass cup initially at 25 degrees Celsius what would be the common final temperature T of the um, of the T and cup when equilibrium is reached assuming no heat flows to the surrounding let, let me just put what is missing there okay so it reads if 200 cubic centimeters of T a 95 degrees is poured into 150 grams of glass cup initially at 25 degrees Celsius what would be the common final temperature T of the uh, of the T and cup when equilibrium is reached assuming no heat flows to the surrounding okay so if there is no heat loss to the surrounding so meaning we're going to use the conservation of energy because we know that energy has been conserved there is no heat loss we don't have any losses so in other ways we're going to say uh, the heat lost so we can say the heat lost is equal to the heat gain so we're going to say the heat lost is equal to the heat gain so the heat uh, the the object that is losing the heat is simply just um, so the heat which is being lost to we'll just say QL is equal to uh, QG so our QL is simply just the heat 
lost by the t let me just say q t and then this one is b is going to be q um it's, it's going to be q uh, cup so this one will be the cup because the t is losing uh its heat uh to the cup so for q t we're going to have m c delta uh, t this is also equal to so all these should be for t so this t will consider this to be water and then the cup have we been given the cup the material for cup they're saying it's glass so we go to the table and check the specific heat for glass so this one mc delta t even this side we have uh, m c delta t for glass have we been given m for glass yes it's there have we been, been given c for glass on the table you check have we been given the change in temperature yes so the change in temperature is simply just t final which is this one the one we're looking at I mean the one that we're looking for so which is T minus 25 that is for the glass this side so do we have M M is there you convert it to kg which will be 0 0.15 kg so we can have 0 0.15 kg and then uh, let me just put C there because it's a constant you have to check it on the table and then multiply by uh, delta T will simply just be um, uh, the T that we are looking for which is uh, the T final the final temperature minus the initial temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius 25 degrees Celsius and then this side will also have the same but have we been given the mass for the T? no, what we've been given is the volume for the T how to find the mass is in the volume density is equal to mass over volume so to find the mass we just say density times volume so have we been given the density for water it is known which is just 10 to the power negative 3 and then times um, this 10 to the power negative 3 uh, I mean this 10 time 10 to the power 3 not negative 3 sorry. so it's supposed to be 10 to the power positive 3 we multiply it with the volume the volume is uh, 200 but of course it's in cubic centimeters so this has to be multiplied by uh, or have to so how many centimeters make a meter so we have 100 centimeters make 1 meter so if we want cubed uh, cubed this will be okay this can be written as 10 uh, or just 1 times 10 to the power 2 times 2 that will be um, 10 to the power 6 so multiply this by 10 to the power negative 6 yeah so 10 to the power negative 6 to come to, for this to be converted to meter cubed so when you multiply these two you have m is equal to you have your mass being equal to 200 times 10 to the power negative 3 which is just the same as moving the point 1, 2, 3 which is just equivalent to 0 0.2 uh, kg so 0 0.2 kg is simply what you are just going to put um, here so 0 0.2 uh, for the mass and then C you get it from the table and then the temperature here will be 95 to be the final minus the initial uh, wait this is losing so when it's losing it means that the the final temperature will be smaller so it will be the initial temperature which is 95 degrees minus 95 degrees celsius minus um, 95 degrees celsius minus uh oh at this now okay 95 degrees celsius minus minus the final temperature that we're looking for so here's just a matter of making t the subject of the formula 
and when you make t the subject of the formula you even replace the values of c's um, you discover that your temperature should give you something like um, 86 something like that let me just check it should be 86 yeah, so this is what I've just been explaining this is what I just explained all right so yeah it's giving 86 degrees Celsius so this is the temperature that they wanted so 0 0.2 kg there then we have uh, the specific heat for water and then the temperature minus the final temperature there and then we have one, 0 0.15 kg we have 840 joules per kg degree celsius that is the specific heat for glass and then t final minus t initial that is the change in, trem in temperature so i'm sure you are wondering or you are asking why is is it that this side was saying initial minus final this side we are saying final minus initial look at this so the general formula or the formula for this uh, for calorimetry is simply just um, summation of all the q values that you have should equal to zero this is just the uh, the conservation of energy this is the formula for conservation of energy yeah so we know that all the energies when added they should add they should add up to zero so imagine now that you have q uh, for uh, for t and then you also have you add it with q for q for for what is for the cup okay q for t plus q for the cup gives you zero so q for t is going to be equal to let me just remove everything so that you see what i'm talking about okay so q for t is equal to so q for t is equal to q for negative q for c when you take this to be negative okay so when we write this this is going to be mc delta t is equal to mc delta t of course all this should be for the cup then all this should be for the t so um mc for t c for t and then delta t here will be t final minus t initial is equal to this side you are going to have uh t final yeah so you're going to have t final sorry you're going to have mc for the cups and then you have t of course there's a negative here this negative minus t final minus t initial so when you multiply this negative in these brackets it's the one that changes everything the initial becomes the final so this is what we're going to have then ne m C, C, C. so negative times that negative times negative there you have negative t initial minus negative times t final to be negative final there so this is what we're going to have but of course this is not how i solved it this is not how i solved it because uh, in this case this equation that i've written here it's showing that t is the one that is uh, uh, gaining and then the cup is the one that is losing which is not the which was not the case in this question t was gaining so i mean t was losing and then the cup was gaining so the one which is losing is the one that is supposed to have this because you know that if you are losing heat if let's say for instance you are at uh, 70 degrees and then you lose heat uh, up to somewhere 30 degrees it means that your final for you to get a positive answer your final oh, i think what you can just do let me not even start explaining this okay let me explain it for the sake of understanding means that your final will be 30 your initial will be 70 but if you say final minus 70 i mean 30 minus 70 which is uh, t final then t initial if you subtract the two you get a negative 4 as your answer yeah so 
if you want you can use it the way it is when you subtract them you discover that one is going to be the negative of the other actually you have all, all these will be negative this side you find that t phi no minus t initial will give you a negative even this side then when you divide by negatives you find that your answer will be positive okay so whether you change them you use them interchangeably your answer will still be the same this is mathematics as long as it's an equation whatever happens this side will happen on the other side of the equation that's why it's called an equation meaning this one this part is equal to the other part okay all right so let's proceed okay so there's also another question there an engineer wishes to determine the specific heat of a new metal alloy and then a 0.15 kg sample of alloy is heated to 540 degrees Celsius. It is then quickly placed in 0.4 kg of water at 10 degrees Celsius, which is contained in a 0.2 kg aluminium calorimeter, I mean cal calorimeter cup. The final temperature of the system is uh, 30.5 degrees Celsius. Calculate the specific heat of alloy. So even this one, you don't have to stress when doing um, such a question. So the first thing that you need to understand, as long as you are dealing with calorimetry, you just need to know that the summation of heat is equal to zero. The summation of all heat energies is equal to zero. Yeah, so this is just the conservation of energy. So the heats that we have here, the heat that we have here, the heat losses and gains that we have here we have a calorimeter we have which is at 10 degrees we also have water which is also at the same temperature as the calorimeter and then it's also at 10 degrees then we also have uh the metal alloy which has been heated to this temperature yeah so it has been heated to this temperature meaning it was initially at um the room temperature and then it was heated uh, to 540 degrees celsius so meaning you have three you have water you have the alloy you also have um the calorimeter so you can say you have q of water plus the q of the alloy plus the q of the calorimeter this should give you a zero so you have um mc delta t of water plus mc delta t of the alloy plus mc delta t of the calorimeter should give you uh, zero so you've been given almost everything here except the specific heat of the alloy because you don't know the alloy you don't know if this is iron if this is aluminium uh, we don't know so we can find the change in temperature so the change in temperature for water yeah the initial temperature for water was just um uh, i mean the initial temperature for water is simply just 10 and then the final temperature is 35 same applies to the calorimeter the initial temperature is 10 the final is 35 i mean is 30.5 degrees celsius so the delta t for water and the calorimeter for water and the calorimeter they are just the same and then for this one delta t is found by subtracting um the final temperature which is uh we say the final temperature is 30.5 then the initial temperature was 540 sorry I made a mistake by saying the initial temperature was at room temperature. No, since we've been given the final, which is 30.5, it means that the initial becomes uh, uh, the the was is the initial becomes 540. So uh, m the m of this uh, alloy has been given to be 0 0.15. So we have 0 0.15. You write it there. Oh, sorry. This is for water. So, water. Yeah, so water uh, placed in 0 0.4 grams of water. So, water is simply 0 0.4. And then specific heat for water, you can check it, which is in the liquid. I think it should be 4186. 
if I've not forgotten. And then we have the change in temperature for water. The change in temperature for water will simply just be uh, the final minus the initial. The so the final is simply just 30 point um, five minus the initial which is 10 and then we add it to the one for the alloy alloy the mass is 0 0.15 is here and then the the C is the one that we are looking for and then the temperatures there the initial temperature I mean the final temperature there is common which is 30.5 minus the initial temperature is simply just 540 and then we move on to the one for the calorimeter so for the calorimeter for the calorimeter you do the same the mass of the calorimeter has been given to be 0 0.2 so we have 0 0.2 and then the specific heat of the calorimeter you get it from uh, the table we've been told that the calorimeter is made of aluminium so you can get the specific heat of aluminium on the table and then you also put your value of i mean you put the temperatures there so i said the temperature of the water and the calorimeter are just the same so the temperature difference is just the same so even here we have 30.5 minus 10 degrees celsius so this or equation is equated to zero so here it's just a matter of making this c here as a subject or the formula so when you subtract this of course it will give you a negative when you take it to the other side you get a positive okay so this is what i'm just talking about okay yeah so that is the equation which i just put up on the board and then those are the solutions there uh, then you make c the subject of the formula so when you make this C of the alloy, specific heat of alloy as the subject, simply just take this, because it's negative, you just take it to the other side of the ecosign, and then it becomes positive. Then you find your answer to be this 497 joules per kg degree Celsius, which can also be rounded off to 500 joules per kg uh, degree Celsius. Okay, let us l look at the latent heats so um so the latent heats are simply just the uh, heat energies that are required uh, to change or the heat energies that are uh, needed to change a phase of a uh, substance maybe from liquid to gas or from gas to liquid or from solid to gas or gas to solid so we have uh, okay, let's just read through these a few notes. When a material changes phase from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas, a certain amount of energy is involved in this uh, change of phase. The heat required to change 1 kg of a substance from the solid to the liquid state is called the heat of fusion. So it is denoted by the latent heat of fusion. So it is denoted by F. I mean LF and then there's also the latent heat of vaporization which is just the heat required to change 1 kg of a substance from um, from liquid to gas it's called the latent heat of vaporization and then from solid to gas is the latent heat of sublimation uh, and from uh, and vice versa yeah, which is from gas to solid is the latent heat of sublimation okay so this is um, what I'm just from talking about the latent heat of vaporization so it is also symbolized by LF yeah uh, experimentally it has been discovered that um, uh, this latent heat of vaporization is simply directly proportional to the heat yeah so when you increase the heat the latent heat also increases though it's uh, a constant okay the latent heat of vaporization yeah so it increases and then the it increases and it's uh directly i mean it's inversely proportional to the mass of a substance and directly proportional to the heat okay so this is what i'm just trying to talk about heat involved in the change of phase depends not only on the latent heat
uh, but also on the total mass of the substance that is um, Q is equal to ML okay so this is just a table showing the the latent heat uh, capacities the latent heat of fusion and the latent heat of uh, vaporization so this is these are some of the figures that you're going to use in your exercises okay so let's take a look at the next uh, example which i think is the last example so the question is how much energy does a freezer have to remove from 1.5 kg of water at 20 degrees celsius to make ice at negative 12 uh, yeah to make ice as negative 12 degrees celsius i forgot to put degrees celsius this side okay so this um you just use the same uh, the same formula the conservation of energy or oh, sorry not the conservation of energy but you just find the summation of all the heat energies that you have here so you have the heat energy for the latent heat so we have uh, m l which is the latent heat and then the other q that we have is uh, and of course here we have the latent heat of fusion yeah so this is going to be the latent heat of fusion because uh, we know that it's um, uh, it's water solidifying to ice so latent heat of fusion we also have the energy that is transferred um, uh, from uh, i mean that is lost in short here we have heat loss so meaning water is losing energy so we have uh, mc delta delta t for water and then here this is the latent heat of fusion and then we also have the one for ice so the one for ice um the one for ice you use uh, the mass yeah the mass for ice and then you also have uh, C so heat, this C is the one that you get on the latent heat of um, fusion um, I mean yeah it's the one that you get from the table when water is in uh, when water is solidified yeah you get it from the latent heat of fusion table and then this one is just a normal C for water that we already know which is 4186 and then this one is simply just the change in temperature okay so this is what I was just talking about MC you get the one for water the latent heat of fusion you add it with ice yeah so for water the final temperature is zero I mean the initial temperature is zero and then the final is 20 which has been given there and then you also have that which doesn't have any temperatures you also have the final temperature there is for ice the final temperature is zero the initial is negative 12 and then when you add them this is what you are going to get so this is just the latent heat of fusion for um, for ice and then for water sorry and then this is just the specific heat for water and then you also have this which is uh, okay let's go to the table so that you see what i'm talking about so the one that i was talking about is just this the latent heat of fusion heat of fusion for water and then you also have to go on the specific heat capacity table that's why you get the other things let me just go back and then show you okay so this one this table all right okay i don't know why it has get, gotten back to this okay let's see where to end before i click another button okay okay so let me see where it ends all right so on this same table here when you go on water you have ice okay you have ice on water 
So you have eyes. I don't know why it's, uh, it has been started performing and I'm just recording it alone. Okay. So you have eyes. Let me just show you something on the table before we can say, before we can end the lecture. Oh, we're remaining with one part, which is just the heat changes. Okay. So we have eyes. So for eyes, that is the one that you're supposed to use. This is 21. Alright, you have the tables, so I'm sure you have time to check them through. Okay, let me just go straight to what is remaining. We finish first. Okay. So. Okay. I think this calls for me to change the laptop. I just have to change the laptop. This one has worked for me for years now. So I just have to change the laptop. I think that's why it's performing like this. Alright, so these examples we are done with them. We are done with latent heat. We've also done this example. So let us now look at heat transfer. So heat transfer is not something new. Uh, when you hear heat transfer, just think about uh, you need to, what, what should come in your mind is condensation, condensation, and then condensation, uh, oh, conduction. Sorry, what should come in your mind is conduction, convection, and radiation so this is what should come in your mind when you hear about heat transfers okay so this is what i was talking about and then conduction we know that it's just simply the, the 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 transfer of heat in solids yeah in solids and then convection is in liquids and gases and then radiation is in uh, is simply in 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 the vacuum so I'll just talk about the formulas, I'll not talk about conduction, their definitions and everything, those we already know them from grade 12 and we did them I think from grade 8 coming up to grade 12. Okay, so let me talk about this equation here. So Q is simply just the heat, the heat transferred or lost uh, during the conduction. Then T is just the time taken for the heat to be transferred from one point to another. L is simply just the length of the conducting material. And then the change in temperature is simply just the, change, the, the temperature difference from the point where the heat is to the point where heat is being transferred to. And then A is simply just the cross-sectional area of um, that given material. And then K is simply just um, uh, the the, what is the the constant of conductivity, yeah, the constant of thermal conductivity that is K. All right, so this K has a table where you can get it. Each material has its diff uh, has a different constant of conductivity. So this is just a um, proportion proportionality constant called a constant of thermal conductivity All right so the table is as follows so this is the table which contains the thermal conductivities of different metals so let's look at um, convection so convection we know that it uh, involves um, liquids and gases and it involves uh, molecules uh, conducting heat um, in bulk yeah in bulk okay so let's look at radiation so radiation is i mean we know that it involves the movement of large numbers of uh, molecules uh, over large distances and it involves uh, magnetic electromagnetic waves yeah so from there we can also talk about uh, the equation which is the bose the stefan stefan bose man's equation so this is the equation i'm talking about so this equation, the same Q that was in the equation for conduction, 
for thermal conductivity is the same it's the same q that you find here and then this is the same t which is the time uh, taken for the uh, for the material to conduct or for the vacuum to conduct that um, uh, to conduct that uh, amount of heat so e is just the emissivity so black surfaces normally con normally has the emissivity that which is close to one and then very shine surfaces so we're saying black surfaces black surfaces have the emissivity he is close to one and then for the shine surfaces uh, shine 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 how do you spell shine okay for shine surfaces the emissivity is close to zero and then and then we have the um, so and then you have the Boseman constant here Stefan Boseman's constant is simply just uh, this one here so this one is constant for all materials it doesn't change you can use it anywhere and it's constant you just have to master it or they'll give you in an exam paper which is this one here so this one here that is the Stefan Bosman constant you have to master it and then this uh, area is simply just a cross-sectional area and then T to the power 4 is simply just the absolute temperature in Kelvin all right so this is what I've just been talking about emissivity uh, ranges from 0 to 1 and then uh, that is characteristic of the surface of radiating material yeah it's characteristic uh, characteristic of the surface of a radiating material meaning it's different uh, depending with the material and very black surfaces such as charcoal have emissivity close to one and then ve very shine uh, metal surfaces have close to zero and thus emissive uh, and, and thus emit correspondingly less radiation so we know that good emitters are also good um, good oasis good absorbers so, yeah, something like that I've not forgotten yeah so the value of E depends somewhat on the temperature of the material okay what if um, there is a change or okay let's look at the next equation there's something that I want to talk about the next equation okay so okay the net rate of radiant heat flow from the object is given by the same equation but in this case we are just going to have T1 and T2 in the equation yeah meaning there's a net rate change okay let's look at the equation which is just um, this one here so this will just be equal to that of course the emissivity will just be the same Stefan Boseman's constant will just be the same the cross-sectional area will just be the same what will just be changing is the temperature so you have T1 to the power 4 minus T2 to the power 4 so this is the end of today's lecture see you in the next lecture thank you very much for your attention